Thank you so much for everybody being here. And thank you so much for everyone tuning in today's panel, Blockchain and Intersection of Mass Adoption, How We Solve Real World Problems. I'm your host, Jazzy, from The Future Hour. Today, we're so honored to have Juan Pablo, Jordi, and Johnny here. So why don't you all go ahead in one or two sentences, introduce yourself really quick. I'm going to start because you named me my name first. So I'm Juan Pablo. I have been studying and teaching about uh, Bitcoin, the blockchain technology, crypto assets for a little bit over four years now. I work with an exchange here in Spain. I give classes in universities, uh, corporate work uh, workshops, and in a multitude of other occasions, I try to share my passion for this technology. And how about you, Jordi? I am Jordi Bruster, CEO and co-founder of Ethic Hub. Uh, which is my full focus is a startup about uh, building over blockchain a uh, crypto startup uh, uh, with the focus on helping smallholder farmers in developing economies to join global economy by facilitating them access to credit hi my name is uh, johnny fry i'm ceo of a company called team blockchain um, i have a history of having set up and run a mutual fund company um, back in the 1980s so i of, uh, very familiar with regulation and um, I now actually uh, write a weekly analysis looking at how, where and why blockchain technology and digital assets are being used, which we sent about 120,000 people all over the world with real case studies um, showing how blockchain is increasingly coming into our society and the publication is called Digital Bytes. Amazing. And today it seems like the panel that we have people that join the industry at different stages and whether it is um, people are promoting the whole industry where people are actually hands-on having their own project and solving the real world issues. So I believe that today is definitely gonna be a very interesting panel. With that said, why don't everybody uh, take a few moments to share what made you got into blockchain and what made you join or start this company? Sure, I can go first again. Uh, it was the summer of 2017 when I, I had my own startup, I was after Doing my MBA, I decided, okay, let's start this new thing. We got accepted into an accelerator, and I started reading a book about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And I discovered that it had a great potential to change how the world works. After working for a little bit over six years in the financial industry, I, I realized that this technology had the power to literally benefit a lot of people around the world, and I decided to join this revolution. So my the, the reason why I joined was basically because I, I wanted to share uh, this technology with a lot of Spanish-speaking people. In in Spanish-speaking countries, mainly Latin America, Spain, um, we, we, are, we don't have a great uh, English level. So uh, I decided, okay, so why don't I share all my learnings and all, all everything that I can find about this technology with uh, my, my colleagues, all these uh, other people who can benefit from the technology but probably don't have access because all the information about Bitcoin and blockchain cryptocurrencies is, is online. Like you can access it almost for free. But, but if you don't understand English, then it's going to be a, a significant barrier. So I joined with that goal, with that purpose to, to share this with, the, with my fellow Spanish speaking colleagues. Absolutely. That's amazing. And I believe that your work is very important because um, like you mentioned, the information out there is free, but we are here to make everything, the knowledge more accessible. So how about you, Jorge? I was CEO of a wholesaler in Spain and I decided to start my own company and I did an innovation degree and in that degree I knew about blockchain at the, uh, by the end of 2016 I fell in love with the technology. First it was more the technology and, and when I became crazy about reading about blockchain I, and then I, I realized that the real thing was uh, Bitcoin and crypto. And I decided to start my startup using this technology because I, I thought that this was the future of finance. I would say it definitely is the future of finance because when the technology is innovative enough that we can put the trust into the technology versus some other people, I think uh, the future is definitely bright. So how about you, Johnny? I was non-executive director for a number of different companies. And it seemed that many of them face a very similar challenge that I think this technology can help to address. Um, many, many of the current paper-based analog systems and procedures um, really aren't relevant or fit for purpose in the digital age that we find ourselves actually sort of uh, sitting in. And, and, and as the previous speaker said, that there, there's very little information um, in a public domain um, that's actually independent uh, and verified. 
most of the information out there, people are trying to sell you something. Um, and this is particularly true in non-English speaking languages as well. So we set up Digital Bytes and we have um, the Catalan um, Blockchain Association who translate um, what we do and create their own branded version to uh, translate into Catalan. We have clients in China who translate um, the information to Chinese and then they send it via WeChat. Um, and it's, it's trying to give people concrete examples. Now, I've come from having run a business um, for 30 odd years and I'm, I, don't, I don't really care about the technology. What I care is what the technology can do. And there's a lot of people out there that are trying to um, make blockchain technology solve all our problems. And, and it will never do that. But what it can do, it can do one thing, and that's bring greater transparency. And with greater transparency, we have greater trust. And that's really, really important when you're running a business, whether it's in the financial services sector, the healthcare sector, education sector, retail sector. And, and that's what I find really exciting about blockchain technology. That's incredible, Johnny. And personally, as for someone who could read and speak uh, fluent uh, Chinese fluently, definitely would love to read your content in Chinese. And also one comment on the WeChat part is definitely uh, in all the Asia countries that we can send and receive email, but when it comes to WeChat, it's just something way, way, way easier. For example, it's like WhatsApp. That it's helps so, you so far ahead, so far ahead what we use in the West really is. I'm extremely curious about how would your project helping fuel the global economy, let's say six or one year from now? So I would speak uh, from my side of the content creation project. I, I, I take part of multiple projects and I would say that my my own one is, is the my social media presence and, and the sharing this content. And I, the, the way I, I believe it will fuel the, the world is, is with basically sharing this with more people. The more people that know about Bitcoin and the power of crypto assets and how can they benefit from, from the blockchain technology, the, the better it will be for them. So if I can manage to change the life of one person, I change one world, the world for that particular person. And if I, if I get to, if I get, I don't know, a hundred, a thousand people to, to get to know the, this technology, its potential and benefit from it, I managed to change a thousand worlds. So, so I guess that's what I can do from, from that side. And I would say that's absolutely incredible, important because uh, who knows, right? Um, personally, that I believe all four of us here that our life has been touched by this technology. That's why we're here. And I think it's this moment of one person or one group of individuals to another, and that is uh, what makes a difference. So how about you, Cordy? I feel the same than, than Juan, no? that uh, we all have to be committed to speak about this so more people are aware of this disruption, this opportunity, this change in the financial system, in the economy, in the hub, uh, we are with the focus on uh, the smallholder farmers because we are going to a new financial system with a new technology. This should help us solve the main use, uh, issues of the old financial system. So what is the biggest issue with the old financial system? That it left excluded almost one quarter of the world population, uh, the so-called unbanked. They are mostly uh, farmers in developing economies, and this is why we are uh, delivering a solution for them so they can join the global economy. Personally, since I know Jordi quite well, and Ethics Hub is definitely doing incredible things, so I encourage everybody uh, watching this right now to check them out. How about you, Johnny? You know, as the previous two speakers have already mentioned, it, the ability to help and educate people. And so rather than catching a fish for someone, you teach them how to be fishermen. And th that's really why we established Digital Bytes, to, to create a greater awareness and education of what different organizations are doing in different countries. Because what we often find in businesses is that they're constantly looking for new clients. So they're constantly being like a hunter, as opposed to being a farmer and looking after their existing clients. And if you keep in regular contact with not just your clients, but your staff, because many businesses, one of the common complaints is communication. You don't tell me what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Because acquiring a new customer can cost nearly five times more than retaining an existing customer. And increasing customer retention by only 5% can increase your profits, anything up to 95%. So if you look at the success rate of selling to an existing client, you've got a 60 to 70% chance of actually selling to your existing clients, whereas a new client, it could be as low as 20 or 30%. So the ability to have a regular communication with your clients and informing them of what you're doing and what's happening, what's going on, and doing it in an educational thought leadership way, rather than trying to sell them things, has proved to be a very, very powerful 
tool. But 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 I just wanted to finish off on that. If you look at the work that um, you know Hub's doing, um, it's it's really really interesting. A- along with another company called Agroledger, who are doing something not dissimilar and helping Haitian farmers to actually get five to six times the amount of money they would have got um, previously by using this technology of blockchain. So this isn't just nice to have. This this technology is being used day to day in many many situations from a, a very basic farming community right the way through to companies like JP Morgan. Um, Microsoft, Santander, these global organizations are already using the technology. They're not making a big fuss about it. In the same way, we don't go around talking about, oh, did you know I use Zoom or I'm using Excel spreadsheets or I've now got the latest version on, of, of Word. That, you don't talk about the technology, but you actually implement and make a real difference. And that's what we're, we're trying to do by giving people this regular analysis and, uh, and updates. I totally agree. When it comes to uh, the customers, um, there is one data I have read about before. It says 60% of customers say no four times before even saying yes, right? So uh, that's something I uh, think that's con- uh, funny, very funny. And Johnny, uh, you're based in UK right now at the moment. Yeah, based right? in south of London. Okay, awesome. So, right. So with this technology of uh, blockchain, that someone was born, let's say, in India versus someone uh, was born in Mexico and someone's based in south of London, and someone is currently in Indonesia, all those people, they don't have to agree on each other's religious belief. They don't have to agree on each other's government, but they can agree and have a mutual consensus about blockchain. They can free flow the money and this form of energy. And I think that is just something absolutely incredible. So that actually leads to my next question. Uh, would you mind everybody explain as if I were nine years old, uh, what is blockchain and what does it have to do with crypto? Okay, I can go ahead again. Blockchain, it's a technology that allows to keep registry of data. So it's a, uh, a ledger where you keep track of transactions mainly. Uh, and this technology has some properties and it, one of them is that it's distributed. So it's in multiple computers at the same time, which makes it very strong because uh, it, it makes it immutable in some way. So you cannot change the past. Uh, there's only one single truth. So all these computers share uh, one only truth. And the reason why it's uh, related with crypto is because Bitcoin was the first use of this technology. Uh, so Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency, the first uh, digital asset that we managed to create. Uh, and it, it, it's powered by the uh, technology, like this technology that we're talking about, that is the blockchain. I'm sure that uh, there are a lot of other things that my colleagues here can complement because it's obviously a complicated topic. Well, that's incredible. Thank you. Uh, just to compliment, yes, uh, for me, blockchain itself, I, I mean, is just a database. Uh, what what makes uh, the the technology worth it is the that it uh, helped us to transfer value and to do so in a, in an immutable way and other really decentralized way. Satoshi had to invent crypto economics. Uh, have to, the, the, the disruption uh, is to create uh, incentives for maintaining the database. That's why crypto is one thing with blockchain. I, I would look at it really simplistically. It, it's just an Excel spreadsheet on steroids. That's it. So it's just a place to hold information. But that information is held cryptographically. And that's where we get the term cryptocurrency, because it's held in a very secure cryptographic, secure secret way, if you like. And it's able to create assets. So it's able to create, and we call these currencies or tokens or coins. They're all called slightly different things, but they're basically the same thing. They are digital assets. But those assets could be backed by, um, they could be backed by network type effect, which is like Bitcoin, or they could be backed by gold, or they could be backed by the US dollar. Or they could be backing companies um, like Hub. If Hub had a, a, a currency, a token, it, it could his company could be backing that particular token. So this this is what it's done. It's created a whole new class of assets to invest in. And they could be real assets like property and shares and bonds, or they could be data. So they could be information about what you're doing and what your cars you're driving or where you visit. And you might think, well, why would anyone want that? And you just simply have to look at the fangs. The Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, look at Alibaba, look at Tencent in China. These companies are worth billions and billions of dollars, not because they have lots and lots of factories 
not because they have lots and lots of people working for them. It's actually quite the contrary. What they have is data. And people are now arguing that data is the new oil of our societies. And actually, if you can monetize and sell your data in the same way we're seeing people playing Axie Infinity at the moment, a, a game on the Internet where, you know, it's giving the people in the Philippines part of the unbanked 90 percent of Philippines don't have a bank account. Yet the Filipinos are playing this game and they're earning one hundred dollars a day. That compares the average income in the Philippines to 250 a month. So that goes back to your point earlier on, where you were talking about the transformational impact of a game invented in Vietnam, played in the Philippines, transforming people's lives because they've lost their jobs because of COVID, but they can play a game and they can pay to play. And, and that's a real shift in our, in our society. I think your, every single person have just made a great point, and, uh, which is very funny because me and Holly yesterday were literally just talking about uh, Xfinity and, and their games. So... <laughs> Also, I know, Hori, uh, you probably have to go soon. So this question I'm going to ask you first. Tell us your future projection of the Ether Prize by the end of this year. Uh, it's very hard to, to, to do a, pre have a prediction no? because uh, it all depends on a set of factors. No? Uh, so uh, if the, the Fed starts increasing the interest rates and the SP 500 drops dramatically, maybe we end with the crypto cycle uh, the, we are now in, no? the market is growing, we are in, in the bull already, I think, uh, and this can be broken at, at any time. No? But uh, supposing it continues how it is expected, no? uh, um, I would say Ethereum should uh, break the 10k US dollars before the the market market cycle ends before the end of the year, and then it will be a correction for sure. But I can be 50% uh, short or or, or up. No? <laughs> yes, it's like glass half empty or half full. So Johnny, what do you think? Well, look, as someone that's been managing people's money for nearly 40 years, um, you know, I, I I actually don't care. And I think that it's, I don't like to focus on what's the price going to be. As I say, I'm much more interested in what can the technology do? And I think there is a very, there is a possibility that um, Ethereum won't even exist in five years time. And there is a possibility that people don't even talk about Bitcoin. And the reason I say that is if you look at most technologies, the first leaders very often are not the companies that become the real successful, um, if you like, trailblazers. And what Ethereum have done has been absolutely amazing and fantastic. But the reality is, is that the technology they've built isn't suitable right now for many of the people using it because the cost of using Ethereum is very expensive. And this is why we've led to literally now the development of hundreds of blockchains. And I think that's personally a really good thing because different blockchains can do different things for different people. So I think we need to focus more on the use rather than the price because too many people are involved in this industry because of fear of missing out, of greed. And this is not about making a quick buck. This is about using the technology to change your business and your way of life um, and your society. And I think that is much more important than, oh, you might make, you know, 100% on your money in the next six months. I think what you're saying is extremely important for all the listeners out there. Is there because it's still humans in this game and humans have emotions. So it is always inevitable that some people in this industry for greed or other reasons, which is totally okay. But like you just said, the technology itself is way more important. And you just mentioned Ethereum, right? With the new Ether 2.0, uh, one thing that is super, super important is that they introduce sharding. And it's such an amazing way to improve Ethereum's efficiency and ability to scale. It is also, when it comes to efficiency, it can increase the efficiency of its resource usage in a such a big way. So I think, and I strongly encourage everyone's listening now to go look more into, let's say the white paper, what update, let's say on Reddit or on some blog, than spending so much time analyzing the price or um, spending too much time on coin market cap, looking at uh, the market cap. So with that said, what do you think, Juan? Well, the best information that I have about Ethereum's price is Ethereum's price right now, like Ether price. Ether is the cryptocurrency of Ethereum. So I would say that it would stay around 3,419, which is the current price in dollars as of this moment in the exchange that I check, Bitstamp. 
So yeah, that's my guess. Okay, thank you very much for today. Thank you so much, and uh, definitely we'll keep in touch. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, thank right you then. for the invitation. Great talking to you and hearing your different ideas. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye bye.